Before we get into the video, if you're looking for top quality sample packs, preset packs and templates for your music production, they're entirely royalty free. You can use them in your own productions and learn from them. If you're interested, check out the link in the description and enjoy the video. What's good people? It's Lotso B Bryce and I am back with a brand new video. Today I'm working on part seven of my WW from start to finish. In this episode, we're going to be starting on the build up, also adding some more elements into the break, getting that finalized and then moving on to the build up. It's gonna be a good episode. As usual, I'm going to be playing through what I have so far to refresh everyone's memory. Then we'll get right into it. So this is what I have and here we go. So that's all we have so far, it's sounding pretty good. A few things I want to add this episode. In Neon part one or two, I've mentioned about adding WW Super Duper Fly, or it was originally made by 666. I have their acapella, I was mentioning on adding this in, so I'm gonna to attempt to add it in this episode. Also want to add a bit more effects here, just to help build up to the big Super Saw climax. Maybe add a counter melody here, then we'll move on to the build up. But for now, we're going to be working on the vocal for now. Get that added in and then we can move on from there so let's go so i'd just like to apologize quickly just in case you can hear any white noise or background noise i'll have my fan on because it's quite hot in my room at the moment just to keep my room cool and my laptop cool while i'm recording but other than that i do apologize for that but we move forward so as you can see here i've added in this super duper fly acapella it was originally at 132 bpm i just stretched it into 128 and it's also in the key of g sharp minor we're working in g minor so we need to pitch it down one semitone also need to do the first chop at the beginning because mp3 files always had this small silence at the beginning so we need to get rid of that right there. So we'll get rid of this and we'll add into the mixer. Maybe uh, do some chops, see what we can come up with. Because we don't want to use the whole vocal, it's incredibly long. We want a few, some sections of it and then we might loop a section in the build up. We'll see how it goes. But at the moment, the acapella sounds like this. Face up to the top. I like to be get ready to run. So yeah, obviously it's originally by 666. w, &W remixed it a couple years ago and made it into Super Duper Fly at the festival big room version. But this is what we're going to be using for the vocal. So we're going to move all these forward one because I like have my vocal in slot number one of the mixer just because it's easiest to find it's the main part of the uh, track. So, so yeah, we're going to EQ this a bit, take some of the low end out. We're going to add some delay and reverb, Valhalla Vintage. I use reverb preset for vocals is a 400 hertz low cut, a four seconds decay. Sometimes I'll switch it to three seconds and a 25% mix. But again, it always changes. Face up to the top. I like to be get ready to run. So I'm thinking here is looping this bass bit so it goes bubba bass. Then we can add that in here. I have to make it a little shorter as well because I want it quite snappy. There we go, perfect. Yeah, so we're going to add some delay on this so it fills up these empty gaps here. So we're not using the entire vocal, like I said. We could use Fruity Delay 3. There's a preset I like called Ping Pong. This one right here. Just change the time to 4. And then we can just turn work on the mix level and the wet, wet knob. What we need to do now is work on some volume levels so as you can see the super saws were the main forefront and now we have to turn them down just a little bit just so we can get the vocal to punch through otherwise and as i keep turning the vocal up it'll make a messy mix that's what we have to do now so to do some small volume adjustments make a quick edit i don't want to bore you with doing some volume 
adjustments. All it is is going through the mixer, turning things down, and adjusting just some volumes, just to get the whole mix sounding like one. So let's get that done, and I'll speak to you in a second. So I've just done some small volume mixing here. Turned down the super source quite a bit. Turned down the main leads as well. They were quite powerful. And then just done some small processing on the vocal here. If I show you, done some EQ, boosting the high end a little bit. It's quite annoying because of the S's. If any of you are familiar with a DS, sorry, it basically gets rid of the T's and the S's and the hissy sounds. But this is quite prominent there. Beast, beast. Right there, you can hear it. But if I had a DS, so I've got to use Fab Filter Pro DS. It has a lot of latency, so I can't do that. But I also need to do the top in them parts there, make it a bit more brighter. So I, I have to like result in boosting the high end. But regardless, doesn't matter. I've added a fruity multiband compressor, another EQ just to dip the 200 hertz range, and then what I showed before, which is a delay and a reverb. So that's what we have. Base up to the top. And then obviously in the beginning bit here is quite loud, just because it needs to be loud for the super saw bit. So I'm going. What I'm going to do here. Is I wanted to do this anyway, but I'm going to filter it in. So if you just add a fruity filter here, Base to the top. and of course, when you filter stuff, for some reason, it adds more muddiness. So you have to put an EQ afterwards. Base up to the top. Base up to the top. Base up to the top. Like that. Let's create an automation clip for this cutoff. Base up to the top. Base up to the top. And then for this last part here, I want to make it so instead of it being the same as this part here, I want this last bar to say the super duper fly bit. So we're going to go in the original one here and try and find it. So we'll cut this bit like that, and then we'll take this bit like that, and then we'll do this. So we'll get rid of that, get rid of that, and do that. And then we're going to loop this fly part, and this is going to be used for the build up. It's going to go like this. And that's going to pitch up, and then we're going to have the traditional EDM build up. So we're just going to mark where the build up is, which is right here. This is going to be a pre drop vocal, so we're going to leave this blank, but now we know this is the build up. So now, what I want to do now is add some more effects to build up to this climax part. I want to make it a bit more energetic, build more tension, and make sure it's building up to the impact of the super source. I think I'm going to be using some risers from Styx's sample pack. Here's some very nice risers here. We can use that one because it's in G. We can use this one and pitch it into G as well. These are going to be very subtle in the back of the mix, but they're going to make a nice difference because it has a nice reverb tail to enter the climax. Let's quickly mute this for now. we go sounds a lot better so what we need to do now is add a counter melody and then we can filter these out of these two bars here filter them out so it has a nice cutoff and then we're going to start working on the build up so i'm going to go in silent for when i get a look for a lead so we can use for a counter melody we're only be using one lead for this we don't want to stack it up too much i'm going to go into 2020 edm and just go through some of these leads to what we can find it's got a square wave here so it's got a kind of that kind of that square sounding lead also has a, a saw here so we could try this one it's got to come up with a melody. I'll do a quick time lapse because I don't want to make this video too long. Last episode was quite a long episode, so don't want to make this one too long. So I'll do a time lapse and I'll speak to you in a second when I come up with a counter melody. So what I've done here is I've made a simple counter melody except for this last bar here, it goes back to the original. These last five notes is the original, so nice, a nice transition. So the counter melody sounds like this. So 
So as you can see this from the original, all this is counter melody and all together it sounds like this if I mute the vocal so you can hear it properly. And it leads in nicely to the build up. So let's just mix this in and then we can move on. So now we've mixed in the counter melody, I'm just going to highlight these 16 bars for the break, creating a couple automation clips for filter cutoff. I know some, most of them are linked to this group, so we can just make one automation clip for that. That'll deal with most of them. These three super saws, I'm going to link to one bus, so we don't have to make multiple cutoff automations. These three leads are linked to this, so that is helpful. And again, there's counter leaders as well. And then, so yes, we should be only need to create two or three cutoff automations, and then we'll be good to go. So just going to create a group here for the super saws. As there's three, I'm going to link them all to one group so we only have to make one automation clip for the cutoff rather than making three separate ones. Just going to make a group here, link all these three to them like this. Create one automation clip, then we'll be good to go. As you saw before, I copied the state for the automation clip. I showed this in one of my previous videos on workflow tips. I copied the state of the automation clip so we can just paste it straight in once we make an automation clip for the car for the super saws. So right here, double click it. Click the arrow, articulate our pace state, and then we're good to go. So now if we just listen to the super saws on their own, see what the cutoff sounds like. It's perfect. This is the build up. We're going to mute this again for now because it's getting in the way. Mute them. Let's start in some snares. Can we, we can continue these claps like that. Get rid of these ones because for the pre-drop. I'm gonna get rid of this last bit of sub bass for the last two beats of that bar. And again, this snare is used for transition, so we use it here. We're gonna use it here so we can get some snares going get some risers going and then think of some sort of counter melody. WW do this melody sometimes. If you listen to um, Rave After Rave, you hear this melody. Um, I'll play it now quickly. So yeah, I want to do some sort of rendition of that. I'm not entirely sure what, but that's what I'm thinking at the moment. So for the snare build up, I'm really feeling this snare. It's got some nice reverb and air to it. If I play it with the build up. It sounds very nice. We're going to add that one in and then I'm liking this one. We can use this as more of a rolling one to add more rhythm. That would be like rolling throughout and then it will also be pitching up and then this one could be the more heavy hitting snare. And then we can go from there. So let's add these two in very loud. So let's mute this one and then turn this one down a lot. And then as usual, the normal build up will half that control B for two bars and the last bar will be like that. Just traditional build up. And of course, you want to change the de-clicking mode to generic, makes it fade out nice. And then this snare, rather than doing the same rhythm like that, what this is doing right here, this is going to be doing like that. But this is going to be filtering in, it's not going to be blaring right away. And 
There we go. And then I'm going to mute this. Add these to the mixers. I'm going to do my usual trick with the reverb where I make an automation clip of the dry and wet. Bring the, the wet knob up, bring the dry knob down. It makes a nice reverb effect for these snares. I'm going to call this snare one and then call this one snare two and then add these both in. Of course, we're going to bring these up for the drums. So these can go like here. We're going to reset the volume here because we're going to do this in the mixer. I think we're going to add this in again, right here. And of course, we're going to pitch them up, of course. So we're going to change this one. We could change this one to stretch, but because it's quite a long sounding snare, we're just going to do it normally. We'll change the other one to stretch. The reason I'm, sometimes stretch works and sometimes it doesn't, because if I do stretch now and you hear it, because it's got a nice towel, you can hear it clearly being stretched and it doesn't sound right. So I'm going to reset that and change it to auto. And of course, it's going to pitch up for the last four bars. So here, and we're going to make this one stretch. Pitch range 12. We're going to link this pitch to the snare pitch we just created. It's like I just showed you. I showed this in my previous one of my previous tutorials. Again, I think it's the workflow one a couple of weeks ago. Snare one channel pitch. And then accept that. And then they'll both be pitching. And obviously it sounds really choppy at the moment, but once we add the reverb technique, it'll fill it in perfectly fine. And of course this one, this other snare here, if I play this one. That's got the stretch function, so it also fill it in nicely. So these two snares are, are complementing each other very nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to link both of these snares to one bus, so we don't have to make the multiple automation clips. So I'm going to call this snare group. Link both of these to the snare group channel, so we can just do one reverb and do the technique. We're going to bring these down twice, so we can put the automation above like that. The wet will start going up, the dry will start going down, and it will create a very nice effect. I usually like my wet level to go up to about 70 to 80 percent so 73 is perfect and the dry will go down to about 40 to 50 percent like that and if i solo the snares you'll hear the technique And then the last thing we need to do is create an automation clip for the low cut like this. So it's going to be doing that because it gets quite muddy. So I'm just going to make an automation clip and then this will go up towards the end. The same as the dry knob, the same as the wet knob. And then at the end, we'll turn the dry knob down like that. There we go, and of course this part here will be a pre-drop vocal. That's why I cut the reverb off. I'm also going to add some more effects. That's what we're going to do now. So the snares are out of the way. Let's add some risers and some sweeps. We can probably add these ones again. It's a nice sounding sweep. We could use that. See what this sounds like. I'm not sure how this will fit in. So I've added in some small extra effects. I've added this one here from Kashmir. And of course this sweep. All these, all these effects are from here. I just added these three new ones. What I want to do now, is, so we don't forget, is pitch up the vocal. That's very important. That is a very important integral part of the build up. So of course we're gonna put this to stretch. So we can pitch it up 12, make an automation clip of the pitch. And then this is going to pitch up straight away from here. And it's going to go like that. And 
And we're going to do the same technique with the reverb we've done with the snares, wherever they are, I forgot what they are, right here. And we're going to do the same reverb technique because it's very forefront. We want this to fade out nicely because it will transition nicely into the drop here and the pre-drop vocals. That's what we're going to do as well. So what I've done here is I've only made an automation clip for the dry. The reason I've done this is because on the vocal already there's a Valhalla Vintage Reverb. So there's no reason to bring up the mix level of the wet knob. So if I go to slot number one here you'll see Vintage Valhalla has the 3 seconds 20% mix reverb. So all we need to do is turn down the dry and you get the same effect here. And all we need to do now is just turn down the volume because the reverb towel of the pitch vocal bleeds over and it sounds very weird. So to do this, I don't really like making automation clips from the volume knob here. I like doing it inside, so I use the fruity balance to do that. So I'll make that and I'll bring this where this is and then the volume will go like that. There we go, so there's no reverb towel. And then we can move on. Uh, like I said in the previous episode, I want to be working on another drop. So the integral part, so this part here will we remain. But this part is going to be changed. So I'm going to change that. So this first drop is going to be the same, but the second drop is going to keep this part. But I'm going to change the first part just to keep the overall track moving, make the drop more energetic, and we're going to keep that moving. So. In the next episode, we're going to finalize the build up and then start working on the second drop synths. So then after, after we've done them, we can start filtering them in in the build up so the build up won't sound as bare and we can keep the track moving. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna end the video here. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. Part eight of my WW series will probably be out next Wednesday. I also wanna make another making a drop like episode. So comment below what artist you would like me to make a drop like. And I also wanna make an episode two of my tips and tricks for workflow for FL Studio. So they'll be coming in the coming days. So I hope you enjoyed, stay safe, produce music, and I'll speak to you all very, very soon.